You've got French President Emmanuel Macron in Washington for the state visit for the Trump <clears throat> presidency. Uh, the president of France said you address a joint session of Congress tomorrow. What would you like to hear from the president of France? Look, I think it's important for us to have national security alliances. That's very important. We saw this and uh, the importance of that in Syria. Secondly, trade alliances. Look, we do need a modern uh, trading relationship with all of Europe. Uh, France could play a key role in that. And so I'd like to see those ties strengthened as well. You want to see bilateral deals, U.S.-France, U.S.-U.K. Is that the kind of trade story you're talking about? You know, I'd like to see more regional ones because I, I think you can just like um, whether you sell your products to one business or sell them to a chain with 100 stores. I like the regional approach, but President Trump likes that country by country, believes we can get better concessions that way. So, you know, I think they deserve a chance to show that can create the jobs we need. Where are we in NAFTA? Do you know? I mean, recently <clears throat> Vice President Mike Pence said, look, we're going to be close, but I keep questioning it because I know that there are elections in Mexico this summer. Are we going to be able to do a deal, get something done, even a blueprint of a new NAFTA deal before those Mexico elections? I think we can. I know uh, at the U.S. under Bob Lighthizer, Mexico and Canada want an agreement. They've done an awful lot of good work. I was down in Mexico City for the seventh negotiating round. I think they're very close. And I think at the end of the day, people are debating what's the best strategy going forward. I think the best strategy is deliver to Congress a modern NAFTA that creates more jobs and allows us to sell more Made in America products in Mexico and Canada. That's the best strategy for the White House. So far, House Speaker Paul Ryan says that he's endorsing Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy to replace him when he retires. Here's what McCarthy has said yesterday about that endorsement when he joined us on the program. It's humbling that he's endorsed, but the most important thing here is we have to make sure there's an opportunity for a Republican to even run for speaker next year. So we have our work cut out for us. We have a great team uh, in this conference. We're fighting hard. We've had a lot of successes, but we've got a November election to go forward. So it's a little premature to everything. So, well, premature or not, will you support Kevin McCarthy? Yeah, as so, um, look, I think Kevin McCarthy's done an amazing job. I think what Kevin just said there is, as a conference, focus on our work preserve this majority, you know, he's going to have an opportunity to show the great leadership he's done as the majority leader, transfers to the speakership is all, but let, we got to work together to make sure we're competing for a speaker's race. How are you going to, how are you going to hold on to the majority in the House? I mean, uh, you know, most people will say, look, in, in a presidential, you know, two terms typically, you, you've got, even in the middle of a one term, you've got the, the, that party losing seats. Yeah. History's pretty rough right. on the majority party. On the other hand, we're delivering on two of the biggest things um, with this president uh, in history. One is a new tax code that makes America more competitive and actually allows people to keep more of what they earn. And secondly, rebuilding the military in a way that keeps us safer. And at the end of the day, I think uh, Americans will have a choice. Do they want to give back more of their money to a Washington that wastes too much of it, or do they want a new economic growth that people are seeing and feeling along Main Street? Well, will, will voters hold the Dems to account since not one of them voted for your tax cut plan? Yeah, not only did no one vote for it, but they want to repeal those taxes, not to lower the debt, for more Washington spending. I just think that goes against the I haven't, Maria, met anyone in Texas who says, boy, I really wish... Washington would take more of what we earn, <laughs> and let's go back to the old tax code yeah. where our jobs were going overseas. I, I just don't, I haven't heard that yet. So you think because of the tax cut plan and its implications on the economy, triggering more growth, and you think because of the, the protecting of the military, this will be enough to help you hold on to the majority in the House? Well, I think we have to continue to drive our agenda, which is still to get this economy moving. I think trade is really important. I think the workforce is really important. And on the rescissions, doing everything we can to not waste people's tax dollars, I think that's an important part of this. In terms of the, the, the work right now and how work might change, the training, when you say that's very important, what do you want to do? Are you going to be putting forth new programs in terms of training employees for what they need to have going forward? Yeah, so you really need three things, I think, to solve this for the long term. We won't get to everything this year. One, a smart immigration policy. Secondly, better workforce. And Virginia Fox, uh, the chairwoman of education workforce, is leading that. But I also think we've got millions of Americans, Maria, who are on the sidelines in a welfare system, government sort of given up on. 
We haven't. We need them and want them back in the workforce. I think you're going to see action by the House this year to start that process to give them some opportunity. I like that. Let me let me take you to Texas. Uh, the Supreme Court set to hear a case today that could reshape political districts across your home state, Texas. The case is over whether Texas congressional and state House maps were drawn with the intent to discriminate against Hispanic and black voters. A decision in the case expected sometime this summer. This changes a lot when you redistrict. It would, but I, I don't think the underlying um, uh, narrative is accurate. Look, we're, we're in maps that the courts themselves drew. You know, they decided that the legislature hadn't done an appropriate job. They redrew the maps to, to be compliant. That's what's being challenged under here. And so I think it's highly unusual for the Supreme Court to overturn a map that's been drawn by, you know, an independent uh, uh, court in Texas. Yeah, it's interesting. I feel like that's what Eric Holder is spending a lot of his time doing yeah, right that's, now. Yeah, that's... Looking across the country, figuring out how to redistrict things to get more Democrats. Yeah, and you know, what's interesting in Texas is that legislature's drawn a number of minority seats that Anglo Democrats or others have uh, have won themselves. And so at the end of the day, even when the seats are drawn to favor minority voters, the voters themselves will choose others for that position. And so I, I really think the, the maps are, are um, secure, they're legal, I think they, they are fair. Yeah. All right, let, let, me, let me end where it began, and that is on taxes. What kind of growth is possible this year? Yeah, so I, I do think we can be well above 3%. Um, I think it really depends on ensuring that we're building off the momentum from tax reform. Getting trade right, I think, really matters uh, to send that signal that we're now armed with one of the most competitive tax codes in the world. Give us a chance to compete in Mexico and Canada throughout the world. I guarantee you Americans will win. Mr. Chairman, it's great to see you. Thanks, Maria. Thank you so much for joining us. Right. Chairman Kevin Brady joining us.